determine how well a regression equation represents a data set, you use the coefficient of multiple determination, or R squared. In other words, how well does the equation we just came up with account for the variance of y values around the regression line? In a way, you can think of it like how we use standard deviation in statistics. So basically, if r squared equals 0, then the regression equation does not fully explain the variance of y values. But if r squared is equal to 1, then it explains all of the variance. So basically, it is a linear relationship already. The equation for this coefficient is r squared equals ss sub r over ss sub t, or 1 minus ss sub e over ss sub t. Now, ss sub r, which is the sum of the squares of regression, is calculated by summing the squares of the difference between the predicted y values and the mean y value. SS t, otherwise known as the total sum of squares, is calculated by summing the square of the difference between these sample y values and the mean y value. And finally, SS sub e, which is known as the sum of squares of error, is calculated by summing the squares of the difference between the sample value and the predicted value. Now, one issue with the r squared value is that it is not affected by the addition of another independent variable. So to mitigate this problem, we use r squared adjusted, whose equation is 1 minus the quantity of SSE over n minus p over SST over n minus 1, where n represents the sample size, or number of variables. p is the number of regression coefficients. The equation for p is k plus 1, where k is the number of independent variables, x. The number of independent variables isn't the number of values in the data set. It's the number of x variables. So for a simple regression where you have just one independent variable, k equals 1. So you've probably come to the conclusion that it's best to put all of this information into a spreadsheet. So I will go step by step on how to develop a simple regression equation and coefficient of multiple determination by using Excel or any spreadsheet. The first step is determining the sample size n. In this case it is 5, which is in this cell here. The next step is to determine the number of regression coefficients. So since we only have one set of x values, then k equals 1, which means that p equals 2. You can calculate and save this value in a cell somewhere in the spreadsheet so we can refer to it later. Um, I'm just trying to save space on the screen. So step 3 is to calculate the mean x and mean y, which is simple enough to do in Excel. Step 4 is to calculate s, x, y, and s, x, x, as we have done before using the equations shown. Again, we first calculate them individually, and then sum them. Now that we have the totals for s, x, y, and s, x, x, we can calculate beta 1. Again, we divide SXY by SXX and get a beta 1 of 0.634.
we can calculate and save uh, this value in a cell somewhere in the spreadsheet so that we can refer to it for calculating beta naught, which uses the mean y value, 0.45, the beta 1 we just calculated, and the mean x value, 1.348, to get a beta naught of negative 0 0.404. Again, we'll save this value in a cell somewhere in the spreadsheet. So we will use both of those beta values that we just calculated to create the y hat values. So we'll put this equation into these cells referring to the sample x so that we can calculate the y hat or predicted y values. Now that we have the sample y values mean y value and predicted y values. We can calculate the sum of the squares of regression or SSR for each sample and then find the sum. We can then calculate the total sum of squares SST for each value and then find the sum. And finally, we find the sum of squares of error, SSE, for each sample, and then the sum. So now that we have those values, we can calculate the R squared, which is 0.36. We can interpret this to mean that the values are significantly scattered about the regression line. We can also use the values of SSE and SST to compute the R-squared adjusted, which is 0.111. So now let's take a look at cases with multiple independent variables, or multiple Xs, relating to a single Y. In these cases, we need to use matrices in order to find our coefficients, but it's easier still to use in a spreadsheet, or in this case, Excel. In this example, we are relating stream inflow and precipitation to the height of a reservoir. So stream inflow is our first independent variable. Precipitation is our other independent variable and we're relating both of these to our dependent variable of reservoir height. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that we have the regression tool loaded in Excel. First we go to Excel options and select add-ins and then click on the go next to where it says Excel add-ins and hit OK. You may recognize this window from when we loaded our solver add-in for the linear programming, but in this case we are selecting the analysis tool pack and we hit OK. Then you should have a data analysis option in your data tab. When you hit this button, we select regression from this window and hit OK. After we select regression, we end up with this window where we can input our data ranges. So where it says input Y range, we input our entire range of Y values. Where it asks for the X range, we select the entire group of cells representing the X values. We also have a number of options in the uh, for the output, which you can select before hitting OK. After hitting OK, a tab will appear at the bottom that will contain your output. You can see that we have our R squared, our R square adjusted, and more importantly, we have our coefficients. We have our 
intercept, which is our beta naught, and our x variable 1 and x variable 2, which represent our beta 1 and beta 2. So now that we know our coefficients, we can develop our equation. So our regression equation is y equals 861.63, which is our intercept, plus 1.58x1, because that's our x variable 1, minus 1.26x2, as we see down here. So for homework, I would like you to fill out this table and calculate the r squared and r squared adjusted values for the regression of this sample set. You will need to build a spreadsheet that will calculate all of the necessary coefficients to help you calculate the r values. Please complete it and print out a copy of your work which will include all the values just like in the step-by-step -step problem that I went over. This is a very straightforward example, but please contact me if you have any questions. It is due the next class, and we will be back in class for our next lecture covering confidence interval. Thank you very much, and I will see you then.